What's good YouTube, it's Justice Hayes to be Pay, and today I'm back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be revisiting the Glorilla and Sexy Red conversation, but before I get into that, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, do all those things, it helps me out a ton. Because of some recent events, I kinda want to revisit the whole conversation surrounding Sexy Red and Glorilla. Now, if you're not really aware of what that conversation is, I will get you up to speed about like six months ago to a year ago now, something like around that time period. Um, there was a conversation being held about Glorilla and Sexy Red, and the conversation was that Glorilla had kind of fallen off. You know, there wasn't really a lot going for Glorilla at the moment. Everything was kind of still. Her music wasn't going crazy. People weren't talking about her. And according to this conversation, it was because of the emergence of Sexy Red, because Sexy Red and Glorilla played to a similar audience, but Sexy Red at that time was going crazy. She was super hot. She was getting cosigns from everyone. She was, you know, taking pictures with literally every celebrity ever. She just did the song with Nicki Minaj. Like everything was going up for Sexy Red. She was doing interviews. Like she was the hot new thing on the block. And a lot of people were theorizing that because of Sexy Red's, you know, kind of emergence, people had turned off of Glorilla because, you know, they're both ratchet girls or whatever, but Sexy Red, Sexy Red was the real ratchet girl. She was really the one who was living her raps, and you could really see that she was really like that, and, you know, Glorilla's cool, but she's not as real as Sexy Red, so because of this, Glorilla had fallen off, and Sexy Red was, like, the new ratchet queen of rap. And I want to bring this conversation back because Glorilla just dropped a song titled Yeah, Glow not that long ago, and it has pretty much brought all of her hype back. Everybody is listening to this song. There's a whole bunch of juice behind her name. The song is on the charts and it's actually actively moving up the charts. You know, sometimes with artists, they drop a song and it debuts high and then it drops off. Her song is going up as the weeks go on. So the song's super hot. Everyone loves it. Everyone's singing the song. Everyone's saying, yeah, glow on Twitter. Even LeBron is singing the song and he actually knows the lyrics to the song. Cuban on Cuban, my shit got last, ho which is crazy because LeBron never knows the lyrics to anything, but that's besides the point. This song alone has kind of brought back a whole bunch of juice to Glorilla. And also at the same time, Sexy Red is still relatively hot. She just came off the song with Drake. They just did a music video, which went super, super viral. Now, she hasn't been super active because she just had a child, but still, both of them are relatively hot around the exact same time. So I think that this song from Sexy Red and the kind of resurgence that she's on right now, even though she never really fell off, fell off, like there's falling off and then there's like, okay, you just weren't really hot for a time period. I think that was more of Glorilla's case, but I think this song proves that her success has nothing to do with Sexy Red's success. It's not like one has to do bad in order for the other to do good. I just think Glorilla was at a point in her career where she was dropping a bunch of music that people just didn't resonate with. I think that's really all it is. I think people just were listening to Glorilla's music and they were like, eh, it's cool, I guess. So they weren't really rocking with Glorilla and that just happened to coincide with Sexy Red's rise. I don't think it was anything to do with Sexy Red stealing her fans, even though I agree, they definitely have the exact same audience or at least there's large overlap when it comes to the Sexy Red fan base and the Glorilla fan base. I just don't think that they had anything to do with, any, with each other directly. Like, again, looking back on that period, that was around the time when Glorilla dropped that, like, cha-cha-cha song. And I know y'all remember that cha-cha-cha song, unfortunately, and the whole thing with Kais and that. Like, there was just a lot of stuff like that that was coming out from Glorilla that just wasn't good. I know it's subjective, so you can have your own opinion. Maybe you love the cha-cha-cha song, but for most people, it just wasn't good. Her music just wasn't really hitting like that. So her, you know, falling off or her having a period of her career where she wasn't really in the headlines like that was just due to the fact that people didn't like her music. But what I think is really interesting is what this argument means more so for us as fans rather than what it means for like Glorilla and Sexy Red, like as the rappers individually. I think it shows that us as rap fans in this modern era still aren't used to how big and expansive the rap game is for women at the moment. Like, women are going crazy. They're they're damn near running the game. They're everywhere. They're some of the hottest acts in the space right now, in the rap space. And I think that we're just still not used to there being this much space for women in rap. I think this conversation really boils down to the fact that for so long, we're, we're, we're used to there only being really one prominent female rapper. For so long, we've been used to being, okay, it's Nicki. And then, like, the rest is like, you know... There's good artists, but like in the mainstream, it's Nicki or Bust. That's pretty much what we've been used to for the last 15 years. So I think that this argument kind of stems from that. Because even when Cardi B showed up after Nicki was dominating for 10 years by herself, they were still competing for one spot. 
you know, even though, again, Cardi was doing her thing and Nicki was doing her thing, as a whole, as fans, we looked at it as them really competing for one spot. Then when this new wave of like female rap started to really burst and really explode, we were like, okay, there can be more than one, but like y'all all have to be like different. Otherwise, you're just like a Nikki clone, right? Like if you're not, you know, you're just a Nikki clone. So we were like, okay, we got Meg Thee Stallion. She's like, you know, the girl who raps really fast. She's got a solid flow and she's tall and she twerks, right? And we got Doja Cat and, you know, she's the pop rap type of girl. She sings, she does pop. She's also kind of weird. That's her space. Then we got, you know, Lotto, who's the girl from down south, down like the dirty, dirty south. She raps with a little bit of a twang. She's cool. She does her thing. Then we got Ice Spice, who's like the cute, you know, New York rapper, drill rapper thing. Like, they, they, they were all very, well, not they were all, but they all have lanes that we try to put them in. And then we come to Glorilla and Sexy Red, and we both see them as like, oh, the real ratchet girls. And, you know, we kind of pit them against each other. And it's good to, like, encourage artists to be different and have them fill different lanes. So don't get it confused as me, like, saying, like, everybody should just be the same. But I'm saying that, you know, one person playing a similar role as another person doesn't mean that their success directly affects each other, like, super, super heavily, right? Because, again, I'm not saying, and I don't want this to be confused for me saying that I don't want competition. Because, of course, you can compare Glorilla and Sexy Red and say, hey, this one's better than that one or that one sucks and this one. Like, I'm not saying that. But when it comes to the conversation of, like, both of them can't simultaneously exist... I think it just comes from us not really seeing how big the female rap wave has become because we wouldn't really do this for men. And I'll explain it. I'm not going to be up here like, oh, you know, I'll explain it. So the people who, you know, get really butthurt when I say stuff like that, don't freak out and go watch Fresh and Fit for four hours to, you know, feel better. I mean that like when we look at the, the male rap landscape, landscape, there's a lot of artists who are very similar, right? If I pick up NBA Youngboy and Lil Baby, they both have very similar audiences. They both probably have a lot of overlap in their fans. They both make music in very similar lanes. They're street dudes who make music, real music, and they really like that. Like, there's a lot of similarities there, but you wouldn't say that because NBA Youngboy is hot right now, Lil Baby can't be hot right now. Or, or you wouldn't really say that. You wouldn't say that they're directly affecting each other in the way that people were talking about Glow Real and Sexy Red because you wouldn't say, oh, well, NBA Youngboy is way realer than Lil Baby. That's why he's doing bad. Like, no. You know, maybe Lil Baby's doing bad right now, but that's just because of Lil Baby. It's not because of NBA Youngboy, because there's enough room for the both of them. And if you want, like, a more direct comparison, I would say something like Dirk and King Von, right? Like, King Von came around, and it wasn't like people were like, man, shh, hey, the industry will have to pick between Dirk and Von because, you know, they both do similar things, both similar lanes. They're even from the same, like, area. But I mean, King Von's way realer than Lil Durk, so so we not even gonna listen to Durk. Like, that wasn't the conversation. You know, people could have their comparisons, people could have their favorites, people could say Durk was better than Von, or vice versa, but it was never, they both can't be hot at the same time. Or, because Durk is here, and Von just came up, Durk's gotta go. Like, it was never really that conversation. So I think it's just more so that this combo popped up because people weren't used to how big the female rap, sta rap space really has become. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, well, you know, Dirk and Vaughn, like there's differences between them. Young boy and, you know, uh, little baby, there's differences between them. There's a whole bunch of differences. But like still that same lane, you know what lane I'm talking about? The street rapper that raps over trap beats like there's 40, 50 guys right now that I could name that are in that exact lane. And their success doesn't really have that much to do with each other. Of course, you can say young boy sold 30K. King Von sold 50, Lil Dirk, like you can compare them, but you would never say that because of Dirk, Von isn't doing good, or because of Baby, Young Boy isn't doing good, if you get what I'm saying. But also, I know some people are going to say, but those guys all have differences, like Dirk sings more, and you know, Von's a little bit more aggressive, and Young Boy does everything, and Baby, like, there are differences between those dudes as well, but there's also differences between Glorilla and Sexy Red. Like, I understand the comparison between them, so I'm not going to sit up here and be like, I don't know why people ever compared these two, but... They're not exactly one for one either, okay? Yes, they're both ratchet or whatever, hood girls, whatever you want to call them, right? But Glorilla is a much better lyricist than Sexy Red. She's a much better rapper than Sexy Red in terms of, like, rap skills in general. Uh, Sexy Red is also a lot more vulgar in her lyricism. She's a lot more vulgar, and she makes more, like, party club hits, even though Glorilla does too, but 
Sexy Red makes more like house party type of music, like bangers, like real, real simple club party type of music, even though, again, that's not a diss to her. Like, it's just the slight differences in between the two. If I had to compare their rap styles, I would say Sexy Red is more like a, a walk a flock of flame type of rapper, while Glorilla more fits into like this modern trap era with like a little Dirk type of flow or a little baby type of flow. Like, they're not one for one either. They both fit like similar characteristics, I guess, and they both have very similar fan base with a lot of overlap, but even still, they're not one for one. So I really just wanted to make this video to say that that whole conversation was just wrong, in my opinion. I think it was wrong. I don't think that one of them can only be hot at a time. I think they can both be hot at the exact same time, the same way a lot of these trap rappers share the exact same fan base or the exact same pool of, pool of fans, let's just say that. They share the same pool of fans. So I don't think that one has to be hot without the other. And I think that we as rap fans need to really understand how big the female rap space is because it's just, it's damn near as big as the men's at this point. Because I, I just really think that that's what the conversation stemmed from. I don't think it's anything like super intrinsically bad. I just think people don't realize how much space there really is for women in rap nowadays. Because Sexy Red and Glorilla can both do their thing and they don't have to say, oh, one or the other. You don't have to choose anymore. You can have your cake and eat it too. But that's just my opinion. Again, and I don't even think they're that similar musically, but that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. If you agree, leave a like, leave a comment. If you disagree, leave a comment. Tell me I'm stupid, whatever you got to say. But if you made it this far, I greatly appreciate it. Have a good day. Be safe. Be blessed. Peace.